Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I built Viral Video Factory using NADM. As you can see on the screen, this is not a simple workflow. This is more than a workflow. It's a complete video making machine. It can write a script, design the characters, generate the voiceover, create all the images and edit them into a finished video. It handles everything from start to finish. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to build this. First, we'll jump into a live demo to see the final output. Then, we'll do a full, detailed breakdown of how each part of this complex system is built and configured. A fluffy street cat named Mavi awoke to a sunbeam cascading through a window. Today, he decided he would find the fluffiest nap spot in the city. Mavi pranced through bustling bazaars, his whiskers twitching at the tempting scent of roasted chestnuts. He playfully pounced on a fluttering leaf, but it danced just out of reach, leading him to a kind shopkeeper who chuckled and shared a warm morsel. After a delightful snack, Mavi spotted a sun-drenched corner beneath a blooming jasmine tree. As he curled up, surrounded by... Okay, let's see it in action. This entire workflow starts with a single click. So, I am now running the workflow. We start with the manual trigger node. Its only job is to kick off the automation when I'm ready. There are no special settings here, it's just the start button. Right after the trigger, there's a set node called video settings. I use this node to define the basic settings for our final video. I've configured it to set the video dimensions to 1080 by 1920 pixels, which is the standard vertical size for platforms like TikTok and Instagram. I've also set the frame rate to 30 for smooth playback and the music volume to a low 0.15, so it sits nicely behind the voiceover. Okay, those settings are now locked in. As you can see in the output, these values are now ready for other nodes to use later in the workflow. Next up is an AI-powered node called Generate Video Idea. This is where the creative writing happens. Its purpose is to write the voiceover script for our video. I've given it a detailed prompt telling it to act like an expert scriptwriter for charming animated stories. The prompt asks for a short story about a street cat in Istanbul and sets a strict character limit to keep the video short. I've confirmed the prompt is ready. When this node runs, it produces a block of text that is just the script, exactly as requested. After that, an if node checks the script's length. I need this check to make sure the script followed our length rule. It's set up to see if the text from the previous node has 900 characters or more. If it's too long, the workflow would loop back and try again. If the length is good, it moves forward. The check has been configured. In this case, the script was short enough, so you can see the workflow continued on the correct path. Now we have another AI node called Generate Image Style. This node's job is to define the complete visual identity for our video. I've instructed it to act as an art director. It takes the script and creates an organized package of information with two main parts, a character sheet and a visual style. The prompt guides it to describe the cat's appearance in detail and to define the look of the animated world, including the art style, colors and lighting. I've confirmed the prompt is ready. When this node runs, it produces a block of text that is just a script, exactly as requested. I have confirmed these instructions. The output, as you can see, is a clean data object that describes our main character and the overall visual theme, like a vibrant, hand-drawn 2D animation style with a warm and inviting color palette. The workflow then arrives at the process video prompt code node. This is a small helper node that does an important cleaning task. It takes the script and replaces any double quotes with single quotes. This simple action prevents errors in later steps that might get confused by the punctuation. The code for this is in place. When it runs, it outputs a clean version of the script, ready for the next stage. With the main script ready, we use another AI node called Generate Title and Description. This part is responsible for creating a catchy title and a good description for the video based on the script it receives. I've given it a simple prompt that feeds it the story and asks it to write these two things. The prompt has been set. The output, as you can see, is a structured response with a title and a description that would work well on YouTube or any social media platform. Now we move on to the audio. First is the Get All Music's Google Drive node. Its purpose is to get a list of options for our background music. I've pointed it to a specific folder in my Google Drive where I keep music that's free to use. It returns a list of all the files in that folder. The node is aimed at the correct folder. You can see in the output that we now have a list of music files to choose from. From that list, the Get Music Set node picks one song at random. 
I use this node to make sure every video feels a little different by having its own music. It uses a simple expression to grab one item from the list and saves the direct link to that mp3 file. The expression is configured. The result is a single URL that points directly to our soundtrack. Before we can build the video, we need to get our custom font ready for the subtitles. The create temp directories execute command node makes a temporary folder on the server. This is where we'll put the font file so our video tool can find it. It runs a simple emptier command. The command is set. The download custom font Google Drive node then gets that font file. I've picked a font called Luckiest Guy Regular because it fits the fun storybook style of our video. It downloads this font from my Google Drive. The file is selected. The output is the font file itself. The read write files from disk one's node saves this font into the temporary folder we just made. This makes the font ready for the video creation step. I have set the file path. The node is configured. The font is now ready. Next, a code node called Cody Once gets the script ready for the text to speech engine. Its function is to carefully clean the script text. The code inside this node removes any line breaks, extra spaces, or other characters that could cause problems for the speech API. The cleaning function is ready. As you can see from the output, we now have a perfectly clean line of text ready to be turned into audio. The Create Speech 7 HTTP request node is where the voiceover is actually made. This node sends our clean script to a text to speech service. I've configured it to send the text, my choice of a warm sounding voice, and my request to get the audio back as a WAV file. The request is fully configured. After it runs, it outputs the audio file for our voiceover. This new audio file needs to be saved. The Upload MP3's Google Drive node takes care of this. Its job is to upload the voiceover we just made to a specific folder in my Google Drive. I set the destination folder and programmed it to give the file a unique name so it doesn't overwrite anything. The node is configured. Upon running, it uploads the file and the output gives me the link and ID for that new MP3. To ensure this file can be used by other services, the Grant Access One Google Drive node updates its sharing permissions. I need this step to allow the video renderer to download the voiceover. It's set to take the file and make it accessible to anyone with the links. The permission is now set. The download audio one's Google Drive node then gets that audio file. The file is ready. While the audio is being handled, a separate process starts for the subtitles. The Whisper X Post Tasks HTTP request node sends our voice over to be transcribed. It sends the audio file to a tool called Whisper X, which is excellent at creating accurate transcripts with word level timings. The API request is configured. The output from this node is a task ID, which we'll use to check on the progress. A Whisper X get status HTTP request node then keeps an eye on the transcription job. This node is part of a loop that is managed by an if node. It keeps asking the API for a status update using the task ID. It will continue to check every 12 seconds until the job is completed. I have set up the request and the loop. You can see the workflow pauses here until it gets the green light. Once the transcription is done, the Whisper X get results HTTP request node pulls the full transcript. It requests the result using the same task ID. The endpoint is configured. The output is a detailed data object that includes not just the full script, but the precise start and end time for every single word. This timing information is then sent to the X seconds chunks code node. The purpose of this node is to turn that timing data into scenes for our video. The code here groups the words into sentences or phrases, creating a new data object for each scene that includes its text and its start and end times. The code is in place. As you can see, the output is now a list of items, where each item represents one part of our story. The split out ones node then takes this list of scenes. Its job is to break the single list into a series of individual items, one for each scene. This lets the workflow handle each scene one by one. I've configured it to split the data. Now, instead of one item, we have many, each ready to become a visual. The Limit Ones node is a simple helper to control how many scenes we process. For this demo, I'm limiting it to five scenes to make the image generation faster. It's set to only allow five items to pass through. The configuration is set, the output is now just the first five scenes of our script. Now, for each scene, we create an image. The Generate Image Prompt Ones AI node is the key to this step. Its function is to write a very specific instruction for our AI artist. For each scene, it takes the text and combines it with the character design and visual style we created earlier. The prompt tells the AI to act like an illustrator and create a picture that perfectly matches our art director's guide.
I have dragged the character and style information into the prompt. When this node runs for each scene, it outputs a detailed instruction that the image AI can follow. Alright, let's talk about the node called loop over items. Its main job is to take a whole list of things that need to be done and handle them one by one instead of all at once. In our video generator, this node receives a list of detailed image prompts. Basically, a to-do list where each item is an instruction for creating one picture for one scene of our video. The loop takes the first instruction, sends it down the line to the image generation node to get the picture made and then waits. It works together with the wait one node, which tells it to pause for a moment before starting the next one. This is really helpful to make sure we don't overload the image creation service with too many requests at the same time. This instruction is then passed to the image generation HTTP request node. This node sends the detailed prompt to an image generation API. I've configured it to send the request to a specific AI model designed for speed and quality. The prompt from the previous step is sent in the request. I have set the parameters. The API then returns a URL where we can find the finished image. The get URL set node simply pulls the image URL from the API's response. It's a helper node that cleans up the data so we only have the link. I have set it to extract the URL value. The output is now just a direct link to the image. Next, the get images HTTP request node downloads the image itself. It goes to the URL from the previous step and gets the image file. I have set the response format to file, so it downloads the image data, the URL is set, the output of this node is the image file. This image is then uploaded to Google Drive by the upload file Google Drive node. I need a central place to store all the images before the final video is made. It's configured to save the file to a specific folder with a random name to avoid any mix-ups. The destination is configured. As you can see, the image is now saved online. Now, let's look at the node named HTTP Request 2. This one is a bit of a background helper, but it's doing an important job related to where we store our images. After an image has been generated and uploaded to Google Drive, this node's job is to send that image to a second location, a service called Cloudinary. It's essentially making a backup copy or moving the image to its final hosting spot. And this is set URL, set node. After the loop is finished, the image URLs are collected here. This entire sequence from writing an image prompt to saving the image repeats for every single scene of our script. All of our assets, the voiceover, music, images and font are now prepared. They all come together in the Merge2 node. This node's job is to gather all the different streams of data into one single flow for the final step. I have connected all the inputs. The output is a single item that contains everything we need. The render script one code node is the most powerful part of this whole system. It's our automatic video editor. This node contains JavaScript that automatically writes a set of commands for a tool called FFmpeg, which is like a Swiss army knife for video. The script takes the image links, the voiceover, the music and the subtitle timings. It then builds a complex command that gives the images a slow zooming effect to add motion, lays the subtitles on top with our custom font and perfect timing, mixes the voiceover and music and edits everything together with nice transitions. The script is in place. What commercial services like Creatomate offer for a 4 dollars monthly fee, this node accomplishes for free by running on your local system. The execute command one node creates a temporary test directory locally. Here, the merge treat node is added to prevent data loss. This set of commands is then saved to a file by the write files to disk one node. It saves the video editing script to a temporary spot on the server. I've configured the file path. The script is now ready to run. The render execution. Execute command node runs the script we just made. This is the step that actually creates the video. It runs the ffmpeg command, which might take a minute or two. The command is set to run. Finally, the get video from disk node reads the finished video file from the server. Its purpose is to load the video back into the N8N workflow so we can save it or send it wherever we want. I've pointed it to the final video file. The node is configured. The output of this very last node is our completed video, ready to be shared with the world. And with that, the workflow is complete. The output of this final node is our finished, ready to watch video. It was a complex process, but it was all put together automatically from simple, logical steps. If you have any workflow suggestions, let me know in the comments. Talk to you soon.